Hello and welcome to Earth Day Eats Vegan Chef Q&A with us VFL chefs. My name's Ollie and we've also got Alex and Justina. Hello Alex and Justina. Now, would you go into a supermarket, buy three bags of shopping and instantly throw one away? No, because that would be crazy. That would be madness. But statistically, that's what's happening to our food these days. One third of all food um, for human consumption is wasted every day, every year. And when we waste food, we not only waste money, we waste the resources that go into producing and transporting the food, such as uh, land, water, fuel use. And this food also ends up in the landfill as well, which is going to contribute to greenhouse gases. Food waste remains a huge problem in this country and around the world as well. So that's our subject today, food waste and leftover food, how to use up leftover food. We're talking primarily today about um, foods discarded by consumers when it's close to or past the, the sell by or the best before, uh, and also unused or leftover food, which is thrown away by households and, and restaurants. We're not talking today about food waste um, that's in the, the production of food. That's a, an entire subject on its own, and that would go on for a long time. So um, we have done our, a little cooking challenge where we've used up our own leftovers in, the, in our own kitchens from our fridges. So I'm really interested to know what we've all done. Uh, Alex. Thank you. Well, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, well, um, I've got to admit before I start to tell you what I made with my leftover, because I pinched this idea from Ollie. Um, now, Ollie doesn't know this, uh, but I really did. Um, now, and it was a genuine leftover. I didn't sort of create this just for the purpose of this. Um, I like Guinness Zero. Um, this this chap here um, and um, and I used it to give extra flavour to a recipe that's on our website, which is Bolotti bean and chestnut stew, which is a firm favourite of mine. Um, and I saw Ollie's, uh, he did a, um, a little video on using a Guinness for St. Patrick's Day. Um, and so instead of putting the wine in there, used um, half a can of Guinness, which I've, I've opened but hadn't finished. And I've actually done it again <laughs> last night. Uh, so I've got a half a can of, of zero Guinness, the alcohol free one. Um, so I, I just simply added that to the to blotty bean and chestnut stew and it really gave a lovely, lovely flavour. And in fact, so much so, I might change the recipe that we've got online, which has got wine in there for the zero percent uh, Guinness. It added a bit of colour to it and also a lovely, lovely flavour. And it was absolutely delicious. My partner, Faye, uh, she also enjoyed it. And we sort of went, oh, let's have some seconds. Let's have some thirds. I also had some bits of extra veg that I'd, I'd not quite used up, which is fresh veg. Uh, that's not quite in the recipe and I added those in as well. So that was my genuine leftover dinner. So uh, th thank you for Ollie for he kind of like uh, gave me the inspiration uh, for that one. But yeah, thoroughly recommended. Well, I like the real stuff, not the zero. <laughs> um, uh, Justina, how did you get on with your leftover challenge? Um, so to be honest, it was more of a challenge finding leftovers because I plan my meals sort of in advance and I make sure I don't have leftovers. So I had a um, weekend where I was making some cake and I had some cake leftover and some cream. So that's something people like, oh, well, it's not quite enough to make another cake or a muffin. So what I did, I did overnight oats. So I used the cream and the cake uh, mixed with oats, some carrot, um, oat milk, and a little bit of granola for a top. So mixed it all in, left it in the fridge overnight, and I had breakfast ready to go. Yeah, that's me. Nice, that's a really good point as well about planning meals. That's that's a really good tip. Uh, so me personally, I um, made a coleslaw, a sort of rainbow coleslaw using carrot, red onion, uh, red pepper, some cabbage, stuff you know that would be sitting in the bottom of my vegetable drawer and then I made a homemade vegan mayonnaise as well so I had a bit of um, silken tofu in the carton that had been opened for something so I made a, a little vegan mayo with that some olive oil lemon a bit of mustard and then had that over a, a, a roast potato not a roast potato sorry a baked potato <laughs> uh, so that, that was mine hopefully you'll be able to see photos on your, your screen now 
Great. Um, so the most common leftovers in the UK are uh, a roast dinner, curry, pasta, pizza, casseroles and stews, soup and vegetables. So hopefully we've got some ideas how you can use those up as well. Um, Justina, how would you, what would you do with a leftover roast dinner? Um, so I think personally roast dinner is the easiest one to pick out of all of the list just because it could change. Um, so I would suggest making a curry perhaps if it's a lot of leftovers, so it's quite bulky. Um, other good option would be pasta bake. So pasta bake could be anything and it could be any base of sauce. So it could be tomato or creamy, it depends on you. So it's one of those things you can chop off vegetables and any other roasted bits in there, as well as soup is a very easy one just to blitz it all together. Obviously, sometimes you need your just ratios because I think mostly after roast, you have a lot of roasted potatoes. So if you check them all in there, you all you're going to taste is potatoes. So perhaps need to do a couple different things um, and set aside some potatoes for something else. Very nice. What about you, Alex? Well, um, of that list, um, I think uh, Justina really hit, hit the nail on the head. Um, but would there be any leftovers from a roast dinner? I'm not sure for me there would be. But yeah, certainly, um, you know, a, a, a good old fry up the next day uh, with any sort of leftover bits. Um, you think about sort of uh, Christmas Day, uh, for me anyway, and, and then bo Boxing Day, um, having a big fry up of all those um, extra bits uh, seems to taste uh, absolutely lovely but of course you can turn it into other dishes as well as you mentioned with with the curries uh, but also chili you know it's, it's those sort of kind of these generic things that you can just add a few spices in uh, and, and re rejig it and pasta sauce is a good one or if you're into uh, pastries uh, much of this can then be turned into a filling for a, for a pie or, or, or a pasty. Um, so all you need to do is to buy, if you want to make it as simple as possible, uh, the um, uh, ready-made uh, pastry. You can get uh, either puff uh, or, or, or um, short crust pastry uh, and create yourself a, a lovely um, hearty pie. Um, and then with the soup, you could then reinvent it into another soup. Um, so you can put a few extra uh, veg in there or, or, or blitz it down um with with you know whatever whatever you've whatever you've got there uh, and change the consistency of it so it's not just that you've just got a, a you know a, a soup that's chunky you've now got a smooth uh soup with some extra say tomatoes in there but that's that's the sort of thing that, that i would do nothing particularly wild but uh, yeah it's kind of making sure that you use things up yeah uh, very similar to me i would probably do something like bubble and squeak um just squish the potatoes and all the veggies we're, we're obviously talking here about a vegan roast uh, so you probably have maybe something like a nut roast. So yeah, just squished in a pan with some oil and yeah, just, just fry it until it's nice and crispy. That would be, be my tip. Um, so what about curry or pasta or pizza? You don't have to uh, tell me all of these, just maybe one that takes your fancy. Alex, what, what, what do you think? Well, we, we, we were chatting before we recorded this and we all agreed about pizza. If you've got pizza left over, have it cold the next day. You know, as, as, as Ollie described it, a dirty breakfast. That sounds perfect to me. So, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't reinvent it. You know, I might put some extra toppings on there if I could be bothered. But honestly, I just have it cold the next day. That's what I do with that one. Yeah. Very nice. Just, yeah. just any elaboration on that one? Well, I would like to correct you, Alex. I will like my pizza reheated next day. Oh, right. So okay. I will place it in an air fryer, make sure it's back alive before I have it. But I think that's a weird thing. Um, I think there's hit and miss with such things. Um, I consider perhaps pizza could be used for croutons, for um, like salads. So perhaps it could be cut up in small pieces and really grilled or just left in an air fryer for a bit longer. So it gets a bit more crispy and then it could be a salad topping with a bit of extra flavor. Uh, but it's really thinking out of there. I think it really depends what kind of pizza it is, how much base there is. But otherwise... Notice that everything could become other dish. So if we have curry, curry could become soup and then soup could become a curry and the stew can be, become casserole. So it's sort of very similar things. But I think most problems people have with wastage, they get bored, make massive uh, pot of soup on the weekend, want to eat half of the day in the week and Wednesday, you're sort of getting bored of it now. So you can reinvent it. So that means 
blending spices, adding different flavors, perhaps blitzing up some ingredients and adding extra things in and making it a bit more interesting, just serving a different way. Yeah, so on that list are vegetables. Um, so perhaps we could offer up some tips on how to store them um, so they stay fresh for longer, uh, particularly things like root vegetables or even potatoes, you know, I think to, to stop them going a bit sprouty. Um, my tip would be always put potatoes in a dark spot in a, in a paper bag. Same with ginger and garlic, keep them in a dark place. Carrots are stick in the fridge in a, in a paper towel uh, in a box and that they can keep fresh for almost a month, uh, I find. Tomatoes I'd keep out of the fridge uh, until they look like they're sort of going off. And if you're not going to use them, then put them in the fridge. Uh, and always keep veggies at the bottom of the fridge where it's coldest as well. That, that would be my tip. I don't know if you've uh, got any more, Alex? Um, I would say um, uh, sort of looking at the best before and the quality of the veg before you buy it. Because if you're buying veg that's, you know, just kind of, it's still good, but it might you know, be on the turn in a few days. Sort of look at the produce and kind of have a rummage about uh, sometimes the, the ones that have got more life in them are, are sort of buried behind uh, other veg. So so I would do that in terms of the, the, the shopping. And then once you've got them, um, plan plan your 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 menus out uh, if you if you can and it's almost it's sometimes there's a bit of a bother but if you've got children uh, sometimes that can be fun to to, to bring bring them in to uh, in, into the process um, but then you know you can always freeze stuff which we're going to come on to a little bit later I think but um, yeah if, if, if stuff's just about going you know you, you can um, cook a dish and then you can freeze it but I think we're going to pick that up uh, a little bit later so yeah, we've got a number of questions that have come in, and we're gonna we're gonna go through them. Uh, Justina, any more tips on vegetables? Um, I think mainly you all guys covered all the basics of vegetables. I hear that storing onions and potatoes and is not a good idea. You should separate them. So if you have the bottom drawer for your vegetables, and there's at least a divider, or ideally just keep onion onions out of the fridge so it doesn't produce the gas which makes potatoes sprout faster. Uh, other thing which we don't really talk about is uh, fresh herbs. So something if we're trying to make a nice pasta by some fresh basil, and I think we just forget in the fridge and it gets really funny very fast. So if we want to keep our fresh um, vegetables uh, together with our fresh herbs, so we want to keep them in the container, ideally with the damp cloth or even a um, piece of paper, which is just dampened slightly like a towel or just in the lid with the lid on the top and then otherwise we can have a little jar with some water and putting our basil perhaps such, such a more delicate uh, sort of herbs in there uh, yeah. making sure they're nice and fresh but obviously as Alex said freezing is another option for most things and then obviously shopping a good tip is to squeeze your cucumbers before you buy them nowadays there's loads and loads of packs of cucumbers so when i go shopping i spend hours in just in the vegetable aisle just investigating uh, vegetables making sure I'm getting the best uh, amount of most qu quality vegetables out of um, pre-packed ones and for the cucumber you just have to squeeze both ends and see how soft it is so it's really really soft you don't want to buy that just go for the one who is more juicy a bit more firm that means it's fresher and will keep for longer Mm, yeah, that's great. Um, I was just thinking about herbs as well. When you buy a pot of herbs, like basil, for example, and it's, there's loads of basil all crowded in there. If you separate out all the basil um, into separate pots, if you can, um, you'll be able, able to keep it going and it, it won't just die off. Um, like if you keep them all crowded in the pot, it's going to die off really quickly. Um, so yeah, when you buy any herb, really, they're all just crammed in there. So you want to like separate them out and, and repot them, and then you can sort of keep your your herbs going indefinitely. Um, and celery as well. Celery, keep it in some water on your windowsill. Um, just thinly slice off the end and stick it in some water. And you can do that with spring onions as well. And they will actually regenerate. Um, so yeah, that's some things that just just came to me. Uh, what about things like rice? I think that's a big one that people worry about. Leftover rice. How how long can it actually safely be kept in the in the fridge before consuming? Um, Justina, do, any ideas of this one? 
Well, it's a tricky one because I would advise at least that's something what I do at home. Um, obviously, with professional kitchens, you really have to uh, follow the health and safety guidelines. But when I normally cook batch of rice, I serve my dishes straight away. Uh, so make sure I eat hot rice on the plate and then the rest of the rice, I run it on uh, in the sieve under cold water, cool it as fast as possible, and then place it in the fridge even before I sit down to have my meal. Because you want to restrict that amount of bacteria growing. Um, and I know some people leave rice overnight on the hob, so they cook the rice, have some rice, leave it on the hob, have it in the morning, cold, off the hob, and that's a no-no. Like, never, never do that, even though some people are good with it because they have been eating it for some so long and they developed sort of natural resistance towards that. But I'm sure a lot of people really have upset stomachs if they go on, uh, that, down that route, so not advisable. But... How long are you going to reheat your reheat or store your rice? So definitely reheat your rice. That's definitely make sure it's really, really hot before you consume it the second time around. I would say perhaps two days. I get funny if it would be any longer than two days, but I'm interested to, to see what Alex says about that. <laughs> yeah, we're all, we're all kind of pussyfooting around this rice issue. Um, uh, well, um, I would ho wholly uh, agree with, with, with what you've said in terms of storing uh, rice. Um, you shouldn't leave it out. It's one of those things on barbecues, um, you know, alfresco dining. If you've set a party and you've left it sort of warming it in the, in the sun, um that's a that's a it's a real real no no but it once you've once you've cooked it and you've got some spare rice uh then the faster you can cool it and get it in the fridge the better um so as you were saying uh justina <clears throat> you can do that before you you know eat, eat your meal uh or, or very shortly shortly afterwards that that's ideal but then storing it 24 hours and that's it uh, in the fridge uh, that's the advice that's given by the NHS. You probably can let, let it um, go for longer, uh, but uh, because rice is, is such a sensitive thing um, in terms of storing, if you're catering for someone that is uh, vulnerable, if in doubt, chuck it out. Um, so the key then would be to not cook more than you uh, really need. Um, and then if you are going to um, uh, save some, uh, you can have it cold. Um, or if you are going to reheat it, make sure that it's piping hot so over 70 degrees. So really, you know, you want to make it see those sort of steam and stuff like that and heat it through properly. Um, if you're getting rice from a takeaway, you don't know exactly when that's been cooked. And this applies to, to all takeaway foods. You would think that it's cooked fresh there and then, but it may not have been. It could have been the day before. Um, so um, with takeaway foods, uh, if you're catering for someone, if you're reheating for someone that, that may be uh, vulnerable, if in doubt, chuck it out. So uh, don't know when uh, takeaway food has been prepared. So it's very tricky to, to, to then make a call to say keep it or don't keep it. I would be very, very cautious about um, saving uh, rice uh, that's from uh, a takeaway. Uh, that, that would be that would be my my take on it. Uh, but certainly if you cook it at home, then one day in the fridge, you'll be fine. That's brilliant. Yeah, I think that's really uh, thorough. I think you've covered all um <clears throat> covered everything there actually um rice is one of the only foods that the molds are omnipresent you know they're there all the time so yeah uh, you really gotta gotta be careful with it and contrary to popular popular belief um you can actually put warm food in your refrigerator uh, they're designed to cope with that uh, not boiling hot you know if you just cook your rice i wouldn't put that in your fridge but you know when it's cooled slightly you know try and get it in your, your fridge as, as quickly as possible so what, what advice would you give caterers in re reusing cooked food in general? Any uh, safety issues uh, to consider? Uh, Justina. Um, OK, so coming back to that rice, because um, we are talking about safety. So I think it's one of those things, as, as we mentioned already, um, serving the hot meal as soon as possible, then cooling the leftovers as quickly as possible. So most most industrial places will have either big walking fridges or blast freezers. We can just cool things very fast. So it still goes with the guidance of health and safety. But another thing is really important, just planning ahead. So, for example, if rice been cooked for breakfast sort of time, just straight after breakfast, just to then be reheated and served for lunch. This is your food. This is your rice done. So if you have any rice left over after it's been reheated, 
perhaps whilst it's still hot, you can serve it as a staff meal to reduce waste, but otherwise it has to be chucked. It can't be just set in the fridge again and reheat it again. So you just really have to be mindful. So perhaps if that rice is cooked to serve, you you serve your food and you cool your rice quickly, that rice perhaps then might become uh, rice pudding for dinner. So that, that time when rice pudding gets made, it gets served and nothing gets saved because that's the time the rice has been reheated the second time. So yeah, that's sort of my side of more rice. <laughs> um, Alex? Um, yeah, I would just want to add that uh, all basic health and safety practices should be followed um, in, you know, standard guidance uh, for professional caterers, caterers, but also at home. But I'll just sort of add to that um, labelling food. Now, in, in, in professional catering establishments, um, you would get a, a, a change of shift. You might have different people working throughout the day uh, and they may assume something was made that day and they can reuse it, um, but it needs to be labelled clearly to, to show what it is, uh, what's in it uh, and when it was made. And that can then also be transferred to, to home kitchens. Um, you know, uh, if you put something in the fridge, um, Put a label on it you know it's simple when 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 you know you might be able to still see what it is but if you just put a label in to say this is you know, cooked rice or whatever and when it was made and that just give you a, a definite reminder of when it's safe uh to use and also um there are there are many people that would go well you know if it looks all right it's probably going to be all right let's not chuck it out so that there is a there is a, a school of thought where that you can smell it and you can't smell stuff you really can't um so um you know, as I said earlier, if in doubt, chuck it out, you know, cook a little bit less than uh, you, you you may do normally if you find that you are throwing food away. But I would say the key uh, with this is obviously storing properly, but label it um, with what it is and when you made it, and when it should be used by. Yeah. Um, and going away from rice, is there actually a limit on how many times food can be reheated? Uh, Justina? You're getting all the questions, Justine. Yeah, I think it, I would say once. I think once is definitely a safe bet on that, just to make sure it's reheated fully. So when you heat something up, you just constantly heat it. Yes, as far as quick as quick your microwave bings, you can have a look, and if it doesn't show the steam and it doesn't look hot enough, you just carry on heating it. Don't leave the dish half heated and then come back. Well, is it still warm? So presumably still one heating cycle like as you start heating you're heating all the way up to really really hot and then you can eat it um alex do you have different ideas well well well, well. can you heat things more than once um i'm gonna say that, uh, once is, is ideal to be honest once once is ideal and, and as you say make sure that it's uh, cooked through um thoroughly so piping piping hot so if you're using a, a microwave, you might want to then, or, or in a pan, you might want to give it a give it a bit of a stir and make sure the whole thing is cooked through properly. I think you probably can reheat, reheat things uh, more than once. Um, however, the the more you start to do that, the the, the greater the chance of um, getting uh, bacteria uh, in, into your foods. Um, so I would say reheat it once is 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 the safe bet. Yeah. Um... We're going to move off this subject slightly in a minute. Uh, but yeah, actually, if food is hygienically prepared and cool quickly, it can actually be reheated a number of times. I wouldn't do it myself. I'd only reheat once. Uh, it's also going to affect the taste and the texture and the nutritional quality of the food as well if you keep reheating. So, I mean, I wouldn't really advise it, even though it is actually possible to do it. Um, yeah. Um, so going back to food waste to uh, food coming from supermarkets and things like that. Any tips for people who are, are drawn, drawn into the, the buy one, get one free type offers that we see in, in the supermarkets? Um, any any uh, tips on, on those sort of things? Anyone? Uh, Alex? <laughs> Um, yeah, buy, it's difficult not to get sucked into uh, buy one, get one free. It does seem as though, or you get not one free, you get one discounted. Um, and it is difficult to, to, to avoid those. It's very, very tempting um, to do those. So if you are, um, it depends on what it is you're getting extra. If you're definitely going to use it, great, get it. But if you think you might not, you know, you're going to waste it, then, then, then don't buy it. But if you're buying bread, for instance, so this can be frozen. 
Uh, so often you see bagels, you know, buy one, get half price or whatever. Uh, if you can store it, then take up, take the opportunity uh, to, to buy it and, and put the, you know, store the other um, in, in a freezer and, until you want it. Um, other thing is not to go out um, shopping when you're hungry. It's very tempting to then buy all sorts of different stuff and not necessarily healthy stuff at the time. But uh, yeah, I'd say if you can store the sort of the free one or the discounted one, then go for it. But uh, if you found in the past that you've end up chucking away, uh, whether it's bread or whatever it is because you've not used it, then maybe uh, the saving is a false saving. You've actually spent more money um, than, than, than you needed to. Yeah, I think that's it. Sometimes you just end up spending more money and it, these things are designed like that and you, you don't actually save any any money in the, in the long run. <clears throat> Justina, any, any more to add to that? Um, I would say uh, use that an opportunity as a game to test your knowledge of menus and what your family and or yourself eat. So when I walk in the shop, first aisle is fruit and veg. And then I say, yeah, you can get three bags of parsnips. Do you need three bags of parsnips? Possibly not. What can I make with this? Can I make a roast? Can I make a stew? Can I make a soup? OK, I'm getting three bags of parsnips with an idea that on top of my shopping list, which I wrote in advance, planning my menus around. Now, one of these days, we're going to have parsnip soup. So that means perhaps I need to buy some other things from the shop, which wasn't a planning first time around, just to make sure these bags of parsnips don't sit on the bottom of the fridge until I just haven't included them in my uh, weekly menu. So really plan around if you're planning to buy something which is an amazing deal, you might need to spend a little bit more than you was planning in the first place and then having to include them in your weekly menu. Yeah, I think that just comes back to planning again, having some forethought, being strong, go, going with a with a plan and, and um, yeah, not, not diverting from that too much. Um, although going away from that, um, on the contrary, are there any um, apps that your websites you, you've uh, come across that you use that um, to um, reuse food that I don't know if any, any of you have found it, come across any of these before. There, there's one there's one um that uh, that, that i've i've come across and i, and I think is it too good to waste um too good, to go, right? too yeah. good to go yeah um yeah. now um i haven't actually taken the opportunity to, to 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 purchase anything um many of the the dishes that are or foods that are available that are specifically vegan um aren't the sort of things that i want to um and vegetarian the sort of things that i want to want to buy um, so I haven't, but it's definitely worth having a look at that because there may be, uh, depending on where you live, there's going to be more establishments um, uh, selling uh, vegetarian and, and, and vegan foods. So you might get a better choice and, and it's, it's free to register. So I would definitely go for, you know, have a try with that one. Yeah, I've used that one. It is good. But if you um, get a bag from a supermarket, it really is just potluck what you get. I mean, you get like some, you'll get 10 punnets of strawberries and a, I don't know a turnip and yeah so you really don't know you can't really plan um so yeah it, it, it can be good it can save you some money but at the same time from what we just said it, it can do the opposite you'll have more than what you need is there any more justina that you've used or come across um yes um app called olio so o double l y uh, i mean i and o um so it's one of those things where this used by community. So it really depends who you have around and what shops you have around. So they have uh, supermarket heroes who rescue food uh, going to waste from shops. So all the reduced food at the end of the day, which is not being sold, it goes to these people. So they take it home. We really hope they store it properly. Um, and then they list it on the app saying collection for some baguettes, for parsnips, for anything you can imagine that will be on there. So you can a bit choose and plan your meals. Um, and perhaps if you just lack of something and uh, your neighbor next door is doing something like that, you can see on the app how far the person is and you can arrange collection and collect those items from people for free, uh, which is free food and food that doesn't go to waste. And also you can participate in being a hero yourself. So collecting all of this food from the shops and then distributing to other people. Um, I noticed around Christmas or celebration times, there are people who are just good people and they make food. So 
they on purpose make an extra portion of dinner and they list it on uh, Olio app and say, look, for those who can't cook, for those who can't afford it, please come collect this dinner so you don't starve on Christmas Day. Um, so it's just really nice to see the community coming together. So that means if you perhaps have too much food and you are cooking massive batches of things just to use up your uh, leftovers or use, use up your food, uh, of items which have been stored in the fridge, you can also sort of donate a spare one. But it's also a bit of a hit and miss. So perhaps someone, no one will message you and come and collect it, where you have to come around that idea. Perhaps you will end up freezing it, so having extra space for the freezer. But also now food banks um, coming on that app as well. So really looking forward to what they're going to be offering. Oh, that's brilliant. Um, so just one more question, as I'm aware of time, um, but we had this great question come in. Um, any tips for using up um, things such as skins, peelings, tops, anything like that? I've, I've got a really good one that I've started doing, which is any kind of bits of onion peel, garlic, uh, tops of carrots, things like that, stalks. I stick in a big box in the freezer, and then when it's full, I bring it out, heat it in a, a low oven until it all dries out. And then I put it in a, a spice grinder and turn it into a powder. And there I've got an instant um, broth, like a or a, an instant stock powder that I can can use in things. So that that would be my tips for that. Uh, just uh, Alex, Alex. Um, well, peelings, peelings. Um, it depends what they are. Um, if they are grubby and mucky, I would peel them and they would go into the compost so the worms can have them. If they were um, um, ideal, you know, they're nice, nice and clean, or I could do that, then I would just cook them with the, with the skins on. So whether it be uh, soup uh, and stews and casseroles and curries, all that sort of stuff, you wouldn't notice whether it was peeled or, or, or unpeeled. Mashed potato. Bit funny about that. Um, depends on the potato. Uh, if the if the skins are um, knobbly and I don't want sort of lumpy bits in in, in my mash, then uh, then I would I would peel them and that would go into the compost. Um, but uh, if not, uh, that would just get all put in, in into the meal. And obviously, you're not wasting uh, anything at all. And you're adding extra uh, vitamins uh, and fibre to your uh, to your uh, to your dinner. So generally, I look at what. Uh, uh, what the quality of the of the peelings were or the outside and and then make a make make a you know make a sensible call on that yeah that's a great idea there's a lot of goodness in in these skins and it often gets tossed away so yeah just don't peel things st stick it in um justina any more to add to that so i think you guys covered the vegetables very well so i want to go to the fruit side of things um so using um if you're eating oranges perhaps using the zest uh for your bakes, even salads. If you're making sort of jazzing up the salad dressing with a bit of zest, um, I used to store a lot of just uh, skins and dry them and then use the zest. So it's a bit, um, you don't have to zest them straight away. So you just peel your orange, leave it to dry, and then you keep them in the container. And then when time comes, you just use the dried up zest uh, to just spark things up as well as banana peels. So not only you can make uh, veggie bacon out of it, but it's amazing fertilizer for your plants. So you just uh, keep them in the jar with water, let it to get all mm. the goodness in the water, and then you water your plants with it. Mm. Um, something like pineapple, when you cut off a lot of skin and actually good flavor out of it, you can place it in the pot uh, with some sugar and water and ferment it. And then you're going to have fermented drink, which health and safety things towards uh, professional side of things. A bit questionable, but obviously take your risks. Um, and coffee grinds, that's a big one. So using coffee grinds in cakes, obviously you might not use a lot of it, but if you're making a brownie perhaps, um, sometimes it could be used as a rub on things just to get a bit of extra flavor. So it has your vegetables a bit of uh, on the bitter side. Um, so yeah, lot, just be creative. Um, and I think it, in long term is gonna save you money and reduce waste. So win-win. That's brilliant. I hadn't even thought about all the sort of fruit things. That's great. Um, but it does remind me, orange peel, I put that in a jar with vinegar and left it for a few weeks. And then you've got an instant um, or a natural anti-back spray, which is really effective. The, I think orange peel has got a, a natural um, antibacterial property to it, the oil. Um, so, yeah, reminds me of that as well. Uh, that's been brilliant. Um, thank you so much. Um,
thanks for joining everyone uh if you've please like this video if you have liked it or go one better and subscribe as well um and we'll see you soon uh with some other exciting food subjects um and new content so thank you very much